sevgili hocamızı size tanıtmak istiyorum. E, doçent doktor Milka Pejovic Milankovic Milo Vankevic. E, Kendisi Sırbistan'dan geliyor. Belgrad Üniversitesi'nde çocuk ve erken psikiyatri kliniğinin bölüm başkanı. Bir yataklı bir klinikleri var ve orayla ilgili, o klinikle ilgili bugün bize ayrıntılı bilgi verecek. Aynı zamanda ESCAP üyesi kendisi ve e, çok uzun e, süredir e, özellikle gelişimsel bozukluğu olan e, çocukların tanı ve tedavisiyle ilgilenmekte. E, çok teşekkür ediyoruz bugünkü katılım için. We, we thank to uh, her for uh, this contribution. E, she is an associate professor of child and adolescent psychiatry and e, I invite her to the... Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for your kind invitation and let me first thank you, Gul, and thank Professor Fusun Chuhar uh, Dargo uh, because she was always supportive and toward our association and as I told you this morning, I hope this is just beginning of our future collaboration because I think we share so much in common, like even phenotype is the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I was asked to talk about services in China adolescent psychiatry, and I'm very pleased to be in this imperial city. This is, in my opinion, one of the loveliest city in the world, and you don't know how you are lucky that you have a city as Istanbul. It's really something that is moving and uh, always is something living here. So. Um, as uh, Gul told you, I'm coming from the Institute of Mental Health, which is one of the leading institutions in child psychiatry in the region. I'm also associate professor at the University of Belgrade uh, School of Medicine. Why I'm telling this again? Because uh, uh, last night I heard that you have at the university department for child adolescent psychiatry. Unfortunately, we still do not have department. I am the only one child psychiatrist working within the department of psychiatry. So we are still do not have recognized within the university child psychiatry as a, a special program, but we have a residential and training program. So today I will talk about um, epidemiology. So I want briefly to tell, uh, tell uh, and to share with you experience why we need good child and adolescent mental health services, which uh, we are in Serbia lacking. And I heard last night that also you have much more uh, needs than you are, have uh, services. I will also tell you something generally about principles, how to establish and what are the good examples and good uh, child adolescent mental health services. Then I will tell the models of community-based care, which we think for the societies like ours, where you have more than 25% of the population less than 18, and then it's a pretty much same in Serbia as well. And in the lack number of the child psychiatrists and services, what we can do and how we can organize the the, the community-based services. Then I will present you some data regarding the services in European Union. And uh, the last part and the largest part of my presentation will be about uh, services in Serbia and especially the clinic where I work so we can share some experience and I'd be more than happy to respond on your questions or comments if you have in the end. So we all know that we have high prevalence of mental health problems among uh, children, adolescent, and young adults. There are some estimations that around 20% of the children and adolescents have some mental health problems. Unfortunately, only 10% of them are recognized and are treated within the child and adolescent mental health services. It's also very important, and I always use my opportunity whenever I'm talking in front of the adult psychiatrist, 
we are here, child psychiatrists, for we understand each other as well, but that half of the life cases, lifetime cases of mental illness are now recognized to begin uh, before age 14 and three quarters by age of 24. So what we know need is a better collaboration on one side with the pediatrician who are probably the first one to see patient here and all around the world. However, we also need much more um, better communication with the adult psychiatry because I don't know how it's here, but in Serbia and in the region, because I can speak about the region countries as well, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, uh, Macedonia, we all suffer from somehow of neglect of adult psychiatrists because they assume us very childish and that issues that we are covering, they are thinking it's not so important and their issue. I don't know how it's in Turkey, but this is something that's happened in my country. So the median number of years from the time a child first experienced psychiatry disturbances and received treatments is almost 10 years, according to some research about nine years. And only for psychotic illness is less than nine years, which is two years, probably due to the clinical uh, signs. So we have a huge problems in recognition and uh, treatment of the child and adolescent health issue. Despite effective treatments, however, there are uh, typically in almost all countries some long delays between the individual's first experience, uh, clin uh, clinically significant symptoms, and then first seek and receive treatment. As I told you, 10% of the children with mental health problems receive any kind of help. So this is the picture that I took from the WHO Association, and it's called, it's about uh, dailies in 2000, uh, attributed to selected causes by sex and age. And as you can see, when we are speaking about neuropsychiatric conditions, including self-inflicted injuries, we have large proportion of the children and adolescents. And this is something that we need when we compare, for example, with malignant neuroplasmas and cardiovascular disease. You can see in the uh, almost more than 25% of uh, dailies uh, in this specific age of uh, age group are due to the neuropsychiatric conditions. And this is something that all are aware, but still we do not have sufficient help to this uh, particular age group. So severe, for example, when we are talking about depression, uh, which is one of the most common problem, for example, in adolescent, uh, we can have that maybe 17% of the adolescent have depression and still it's almost every fifth of them, and still we are lacking in giving them opportunity to help and to improve their condition. Then when we are speaking about anxiety, this is something that we even yesterday talked uh, about anxiety disorder, which we know that is one of the most common disorder and in the children and adolescents, and we don't even have a sufficient researchers research about the anxiety globally, not talking about only our region. We don't have a guidelines, for example, for anxiety, and we have thousands of them on ADHD or, or autism sp uh, spectrum disorder, which I, of course they are important uh, conditions, but comparing with the prevalence of let's say depression or anxiety, these two things I can say it's neglect. So we need when we are speaking about services to take into account not only psychosis and ADHD and uh, autism spectrum disorder, but we need to think about depression, anxiety as a uh, one of the most prevalent uh, conditions in child psychiatry. Uh, also, um, I don't know how is the situation in Turkey, but in Serbia we have increased number of youngsters who are start using illicit drugs. So, and we don't have any institution, or we don't have even professionals 
who are educated to give a help for the patients below 15, because we have now cases of children below 15 who are starting using drugs since 12 or 13, and none of us are educated to give this kind of special help. So we uh, are really lacking of infos, we are living, really lacking of epidemiological studies, we are uh, have a facing problems how to help children who are using substance and this is the increasing problem. Also, when we are speaking about suicide, the most feared and tragic outcome of the mental illness, uh, our youngest patient was who committed the suicide was eight, and it was due to the depression, and depression was not recognized. So this is, and we all are aware that this is the third most common cause of death among adolescents and, and young adults proceed uh, by a car accident mostly and homicide. So again, this is the huge issue and our services need to be aware of this. Uh, what is also very important, and uh, we are kind of trying to improve our collaboration with the pediatrician, uh, we don't have well-developed liaison child psychiatry, and I heard yesterday that most of your departments are within the pediatrician setting, which is okay. Comparing, for example, the countries where and the region where I am coming from, we are uh, more have separate clinics for, let's say, adult psychiatry, and within the adult psychiatry, we have clinic for children and adolescents. Also, in many other institutions, which I will show you later, we have this kind of uh, thing. And then when you have a large university pediatrician hospitals for with more than 500 beds, you don't have any child mental health uh, professional, except maybe one or two psychologists for such a large number of kids. And we know that children with a chronic illness are two times more likely to have psychosocial dysfunction. And uh, vice versa, children with the mental health problems, they have higher users of health care due to their uh, physical uh, conditions. So we need to get and to improve our collaboration. And this is something that I really found very uh, useful to share with you that by 2020 or 2030, it is estimated that up to 40% of patient visits to pediatrician will involve long-term chronic disease management or physical or psychological and biological condition. And this is something that Pediatrician Association has as a, as a goal of their task force for the vision of pediatrician up to, to uh, 2020. So they uh, believe that in 2020, pediatrician have a wider array of skills, including more in-depth knowledge of comfort treating, behavioral, developmental, and mental health concerns. Medical education should include mental health intervention, which are now, and I don't know what is the position in Turkey, so I would really like to know, like since 2016, like very recently, pediatrician in my country uh, start to have education about developmental problems and mental health problems, but is because it was completely neglected by them, all these kind of uh, issues. So when we are speaking how much patients are getting help, unfortunately, we don't have numbers from most of the country just because there is a lacking number of child psychiatrists and when you need to do everything like research, clinic, uh, studies, it's just difficult to find a balance within all of these issues. So we have data from abroad and we know that uh, uh, we have increased number of children and for example in U, uh, US, uh, 15 million children have diagnosable psychiatric and learning disorder, but 70% of them uh, don't receive help as they need. So can you then imagine if we compare such a developed country with underdeveloped or 
developing countries. So even if the country like US, they have a imbalance between the minorities, for example, you can see then one in three Caucasian kids with mental health problems got the help. But then you can see in African America or even Latino, they even, so these are Im, uh, imbalance between the minorities and between rural and urban, uh, urban surroundings. And I will, and I will uh, speak about this a little bit later. So epidemiology is important to discuss, but still etiology is vital. Why say this? Because we are living in specific time of um, time when you have large number of refugees in your country as we have, and we, uh, we need to face this kind of psychosocial troubles that they are facing every day. And we have this such a shifting from culture to culture, and it's going to, and the number of this kind of uh, problems that we are facing is increasing every month. So it is tremendous burden of all of us how to organize services. And, and how to help all needing. So on the one side. On the other side, if we want to help, we need to understand what's going on. So uh, basic research and clinical investigation is needed to be uh, and to face in order to understand the basis of mental illness. And then the tragedy is that we most often do not know the best treatment and for whom various treatments will be most accurately provided. So somehow, sometimes I feel as a jungler, you know what is jungler? So on one side you have a family, school, center for social works, different cultural backgrounds, uh, lacking in some even treatment procedure. Most of the medication in child and adolescent psychiatry are off-label and you need to explain parents, expel patients, why you are giving off-label medication to their child. So I guess we are all have a similar problem, so it's really very difficult to uh, balance all these things. Uh, uh, the growth in evidence-based treatment, including medication and psychotherapies, increasingly allow us to treat specific symptoms. But still, in the country like ours, I mean, you are much more developed than comparing with Serbia, but in lacking number, it's really difficult to, uh, to replicable fashion that we have from US or from UK. For example, we have in European uh, Union, you know that we have only only six or seven uh, medis uh, uh, medicines, like uh, uh, the treatment that you can offer, medical uh, treatment that you can offer. So it's really difficult. So how this, uh, comparing with all this that I already said, so how we can organize what will be the best services. Um, yes, I will. so I told about the lacking number. So what are the general principles about services in child and adolescent psychiatry? We are all aware that there are multiple inequities in the mental health resources available to rural and remote communities compared with the metropolitan areas. So basically, uh, child adolescent mental health services are settled in the cities, and I think it's all around. And we know that uh, most of our patients are also coming from the rural. So uh, we always, whenever we have a child, we have a family as well. So separation with the families is something that we need to think about. And what, that's the reason why we need to improve more community-based services to to come to the patients where they live, not to expect them to come to the cities and to get the best help. So triage assessment tools has been proven beneficial in assisting professionals in determination, prioritization, and assessment of risk for children and youth mental health problems. And just this morning, Gul and I was discussing how much, how many patients she has per day in their in her clinic, and also is in my clinic. We are lacking a number of child psychiatrists, and the needs are increasing every day. And then somehow we need to improve the triage because it's really not necessary to treat anorexia in the third psychiatric 
uh, department, university, child, adolescent department. They can do by the pediatrician, but unfortunately, pediatricians are referring to us even anoreses and even some kind of eating problems in two years old kids, which is, uh, okay, could be some infant anorexia, but still they can do more, we can just be uh, helpful to them. So triage is something that we need for services development. Also, community is much preferred by patient over hospital care. Imagine how difficult it is for children and for adolescents to separate and to get to the hospital. Of course, when it needs, it's need, but this should be the last thing that we should offer. Randomized control studies comparing community-based with hospital care for patients with severe mental illness who present for acute treatments opposed, uh, as opposed to longer-term care have shown no advantages for hospital-based services in terms of clinical symptoms and social function outcome. So definitely we need to improve this kind of um, community-based uh, care. Also, lens of stay for psychiatric hospitalization for children and adolescents have shortened over the past two decades. For example, in the department when I was working, when I'm working, we have now 16 days average stay, and then like 10 years ago, it was almost 21, or even more than 21. So. Uh, even that we have uh, this kind of shortening over the past two decades, hospital-based care continues to constitute a major segment of youth services. Uh, the focus of psychiatric hospitalization has now shifted from comprehensive evaluation and treatment to brief intervention and intensive intervention. And this is something that we need to improve, that how we can actually uh, improve and shorten the diagnostic procedure in, uh, because it is better for our small patients and for adolescents not to be separated for long for their everyday uh, life, for schools, from families. So this is kind of shift that is uh, moved uh, all around the globe. So more research is needed to improve our understanding of acute mental health care for youth so that new strategies and policies can enhance the system of providing mental health services to children and adolescents. Again, I think we need to improve psychiatric consultation and li liaison, which demo uh, demonstrate in some country where it's working very well, improved efficacy of services delivery and cost reduction, but is because it's much, it's less expensive. And I think our governments needs to know why we need to have mental health professionals, child psychiatrists within the pediatric institution. And I know it's here, it's like that, but in Serbia, we are separate and I think I think we need to improve this. And also something that I think need to be improved is home-based acute care treatment, which we don't have in Serbia, but there are in some countries they have uh, this kind of uh, treatment because it is cost effective, reduce loss to follow up, decrease family strain, and results in greater community satisfaction. So uh, we need to organize services to have more this kind of home-based uh, home acute care treatment, like uh, making some mobile teams or making some more um, mobile child psychiatry uh, services. Uh, the rates and the use of aftercare services uh, evidences of their effectiveness has not been well documented, so we don't know and we don't have a critical examination what is the aftercare services, because probably we have only time to in-care, <laughs> in-service uh, care, but this is something that we really need to know, and now I will show you later the, 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 the uh, paper which was published this year in ACAP journal about the follow-up, the transition from adolescent to adult uh, uh, psychiatry. So, so the, the emergency department is often the first healthcare setting to view manifestation of mental health problems in youth 
and we need to improve the knowledge of the people who are working in emergency department and they are use often the direct result of inadequate availability of outpatient services in the U U community so if we develop more services in community then we will have less number who are coming to the emergency departments we need the routine standardized screening for mental health conditions in children which is lacking now we are have improved the screening for early developmental disorders so we now have mchat and those kind of interviews for really uh, early uh, early signs but then when we are coming to the adolescents for or kids below 8 10 or 12 we don't have good screening instruments we need specific intervention to increase coordination between emergency department and larger mental health system and um, it is imperative to consult users of psychiatric uh, services like uh, family members and young people and to involve them. Like in the department where I work, we have this small questionnaire which at the end of the treatment we give to our patients and like mostly are satisfied, but there are some who are not and usually they complain about time they spend in a in, in a direct contact with the medical doctors, uh, with the physicians, because all of us are involved in many things. So even if we hospitalize patients, we are not giving them sufficient time to talk with us. And of course, when we are, uh, when they are hospitalized, they expect be uh, more with their doctors. However, we decide and we have our alliers, like psychologists, special educators, logopeds, defectologists, um, uh, and they are, uh, and even uh, specialized nurses who are actually more involved in this uh, uh, taking care of inpatient uh, uh, patients. So if inpatient units survive because we are globally have infos that um, they, are, they will decrease, it will be necessary to demonstrate what they offer over and above community-based care and why they're an essential part of child mental health provision. So I think we need to improve our inpatient uh, services in that manner. So several models of community-based care that a generator empirically support are wraparound uh, therapeutic foster care, intensive case management, crisis response, and day treatment. And later I will just briefly show how they can be uh, organized. So, uh, outcome research of residential treatment in child psychiatry can be plagued by methodological limitations and lack of funding. So we need more studies to uh, show that uh, uh, how we can improve our work. Uh, Psychiatric hospitalization for children and adolescents has, uh, uh, sh uh, has sh uh, significantly shortened over decades. However, uh, we have this kind of offering still. So when I told you about the models of community-based care, there are uh, six models which I want to share with you now, and they are uh, kind of new models of how the services in child psychiatry should be organized. So when we are speaking about wraparound approach, this is kind of unique set of community services and natural supports individualized for that child, for that specific child, and for the family. And this approach, individualized and strengthened based services, they are working in family empowerment, cultural competence, unconditional care, and achievements of outcome. This is the use of flexible funding, uh, which is also very important, and they emphasis on non-traditional services such as in-home providers, respite care, therapeutic foster care, and services provided by paraprofessionals. So somehow we need to involve them, especially when we are lacking of, uh, of the specialist and when we have this kind of transitional periods. The other thing is intensive case management, which is effective for crisis-prone, high-risk use population. This is the family-centered intensive case management, and they have, um, it was developed by Evans, and this approach used parents advocated and flexible funding to purchase economic and social support. And th this is something that we are planning to start uh, regarding the autism spectrum disorder because uh, we are all aware that these kids need much more treatment that we can offer in our institution. For example, average like, uh, 
in Serbia we can offer one week uh, uh, treatment for all of these kids because it, it's increasing number and increasing prevalence of this disorder. So we contact Autism Speaking, uh, Autism Speaking Association in the, um, New York and uh, we also contact WHO and they have PCT which is Parental Skill Training and it's very good training uh, which we can offer to our parents and that's the way how we can increase uh, the intensive case, uh, intensive program for the kids. So this is kind of pyramid. Uh, you have the professional on the top and then you educate the parents and parents educate the parents. And these are the skills how to improve the condition of the children with neurodevelopmental disorder. Then uh, we can have a crisis service models which include rapid evaluation and assessment services, like something that we can do in a couple days. And this is uh, the use of emergency room and inpatient services uh, by intervening immediately and providing intensive treatment. So these are kind of, uh, that was uh, like a hotlines, walk-in clinics, emergency room services, mobile crisis team, short-term residential services, home-based services. Uh, and this is something that we have for a child who are abused and neglect. So for all of them, which are decide to take off from the family, we have this special crisis uh, services which are set, settled uh, uh, within the social services, but they have a psychologist and they have us as a consultant to, uh, to improve this kind of international intervention which I need at the beginning of the uh, all kind of crisis. So this is something that just uh, like therapeutic foster care is something that I think it's important just to uh, a little bit talk about this because these are for foster parents that are trained uh, in the emotional and behavioral management of children and youth with severe emotional and behavior problems because we are now all aware that putting children in another institution, it's not good for them. So that's the reason why we decide to educate more foster parents and to put this specific abused children or children with severe uh, problems within the foster uh, homes and uh, settings usually are taking one or two children of course because it's, it is difficult to have more of them and it's good for children to have more attention and then there are some uh, uh, randomized control studies that demonstrate um, improved behavior decreased use of institutional care and lowered cost compared if you put these children in the in the institution or in a psychiatric settings, which happened in the in the past. I don't know how it's in Turkey, but we have many kids with a child abuse and neglect issue putting in the psychiatric units and they do not need to be there. They need to be apart from the abusers, but within some more open uh, system than it's uh, child psychiatry. And very important day uh, treatment programs designed as more intensive option than traditional outpatient service. So the kids are coming and I will show later our day hospital for adolescents. So they are staying for eight hours, they have a full program, but they are going back home and they can even, we can maybe make some uh, deals with the school. So half time in the hospital, half time in school. And this is something that is really improving their condition. Uh, on the other side, uh, stigmatization which is great issue among adolescents is on that way uh, lower. So uh, frequently they are used as alternative or to hospitalization for inpatient hospitalization and Although most studies of day treatment show positive results, uh, sh uh, most are uncontrollable, so we need more details how we can prove that these day treatment programs are very good. Telepsychiatry is something that is, I think, the last shift from, and the modern shift, and somehow, I don't know how you are feel, but I sometimes feel that I'm lost uh, in all this kind of technology that we are not using as we should use, because our kids, I read recently a paper from the Stanford University, they have a special team who analyze, and I was shocked with the data. So average child spend five hours and 15 minutes in front of the, of the screens, 
whatever, phones, uh, TV, whatever. And then if they are playing games on consola, they're spending even 10 hours. So this is incredible. We don't know actually what these screens are making to our child. Uh, so what we should do is somehow use <laughs> these instruments for our purpose. So I know, for example, then in Deutschland, in, in Germany, they start some kind of applications for depressed adolescents, how to improve their physical activities. And I know that there are many apps for autism uh, spectrum kids. So somehow this is very... Um, if sufficient to use this kind of uh, uh, telepsychiatry. And I don't know, are you aware of WHO program which is now allowed to be on app on our uh, mobile phones? They have MGAP program, so you can have all kind of diagnostic and assessment procedure uh, on different languages, on English for sure, they are now on Serbian and probably maybe they are on Turkish. So you can use this, I can maybe show you later, is excellent uh, and easy way to, you know, to, uh, to help you diagnosing and assessment tools. So this is something which could be very, very useful and especially could use in uh, rural and remote communities to gain access to psychiatric services and to support. So this is this will show to be highly satisfactory by the consumers, and we are not using telepsychiatry as we should do. This is my uh, personal opinion. And I talk a little bit about this mental health liaison team already. So it's just the growing literature body uh, that supports the importance of consultation and liaison in improving the efficacy of service delivery. There is evidence that psychiatric liaison teams are virtually not existent in the vast of the majority of the programs. I cannot imagine, like for the for the children who have diabetes or chronic uh, uh, renal disorder or not to speak about the, uh, on, uh, the, the cancer patient and stuff. So it is absolutely crazy not to have the liaison team uh, uh, around them. So this is uh, special, the pediatrician as a key point of care has been identified as an essential component of success and we as a child and mental health professionals need to uh, work in collaboration uh, regarding this uh, chronic illness. So this is just the break of the first part. So young men, this is from the, this is my favorite journal, the New Yorker. So young men go to room and stay there until your cerebral cortex mature. So hopefully with the improving of the services, we will uh, get this young men from the room and to help them uh, uh, get more and better life. So this is the family uh, center community-based system of services, which we just talked. So we need to know that family with the children need to be in the center and all other resource we need to use. Like, we didn't talk about spiritual resources. I don't know how it's in Turkey, but it is absolutely lacking in Serbia. And I think for some patients, they will be very useful, like whatever you think about this. And then we have uh, recreational programs. I saw yesterday in a, then in a gold hospital, you have this recreational zone. Unfortunately, the clinic when I'm working, we don't have, we have a park, but there is no place for recreation. Uh, we have actually a small um, fitness room within the institution but for kids will be much better to have out uh, for have some out services and for example in Zagreb in Croatia they have a huge hospital for children and adolescent psychiatry and within their hospital they have lovely park with all this recreational area and we are all aware how this is important for our kids. So we need to have these resources and there is many others like education, social services, medical home, insurance, transportation, juvenile justice. So this is something that all we need to collaborate and all we need to have within. So that's the reason why I think and believe that community-based system of services is something that will give the chance to our kids and adolescents to uh, function better. So what works for families? Understand the, the individual family level. They need to understand the early stages of emotional uh, problems. We need to help the family to understand how to access the mental health services. We need to provide the family with resources. We need to link the family with the family advocacy organization. We are lacking of that. I don't know, do you have family advocacy organization? But I was uh, uh, visiting the in the London, the Sunshine House for uh, Early Development 
mental disorder, they have a special professional who is the one who explain everything that bright medical doctor explain. You know, sometimes patients need to understand what's going on, and they have a special special person who is actually the advocacy of, and I think this is very important. Also, uh, we need to develop and build no wrong door policies, support the development of full area of effective mental health services. We need to support early identification and early intervention, and this is something that's absolutely lacking. And we also need to know and um, and to uh, educate patients how to do. And this is very good uh, example, guidelines for health supervision of infant children and adolescents, because it set principles, strategies, and tools that are theory-based, evidence-driven, and system-oriented, and can be used to improve uh, health and well-being of all children, and within them, children with the mental health problems. And when we are speaking about primary health, task force or mental health team, they need to facilitate health system changes, build clinician competencies and incrementally change practice, being a, a strong coalition. And I don't know how it's here, but our primary health care is completely overburdened with the caseload. For example, pediatrician in, uh, in Serbia, they have around of 30 to 60 patients per day. And then when we are asking them, could you please talk a little bit about the mental health issue, they are kind of, okay, come on. I cannot even ask for the name and what's the, the common problem, and you are now telling me to ask about mental health problems. But we did something. We developed on some developmental counseling services which can offer much more time to kids. So things can be do if the people have in mind that they need to assess some mental health problems. So we have, uh, we need to uh, improve and to help uh, uh, pediatrician with strategies, how to work with the families, how to collaborate with the mental health professionals, educate the members of the chambers, because I found that uh, the most problematic people to talk in collaborations are those who are highly level and highly educated like professors of pediatricians or even those who are in republic uh, uh, commission within the ministry of health they cannot understand the need for collaboration up to my opinion so uh, this is the the paper that i want to show you it was published in lancet in 2017 and it says architecture and functioning of children and adolescent mental health services in in europe and uh, it was uh, characterized by the child and mental health services in the European Union in 28 countries. And uh, there gives some common conclusion that neurodevelopmental disorders were the most frequent diagnostic group for seeing in child and adolescent mental health services, which is okay, we have a high prevalence, but I think we are not recognized enough other problems like uh, depression, anxiety, behavioral problems, and that's the reason why we have this. Although I'm the one who is actually dealing mostly with autism spectrum disorder at my clinic, however, I know that this is not only the issue in child psychiatry. And uh, although there are more, much more research in ADHD and bipolar and autism, we are lacking. We are lacking of services, treatment, guidelines, everything about other common mental health problems in children. This is also important to know that 70% of Europe, European Union country have official child and adolescent mental health policy. For example, in Serbia we don't have, and I heard from Frosun you have. So the, you don't have or have? Okay, so we really need this. This is the way how we should actually <laughs> prove that we are existing to our policy maker. So you can see here when we are speaking about a EU country, and this is the number of child adolescent services per 100,000 uh, population. As you can see, they have the, 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 uh, the biggest number of them are in, in, uh, in the, this is the Nor uh, Finland, I think, and then in UK and Ireland, in Germany and in Slovenia. And then there is a less number in other country of uh, Europe. And then when you're speaking about inpatient beds, 
per countries, you can see the largest number of bets are in Germany following France, the Netherlands, and Switzerland, and the Czech Republic. Like last night, Professor Haberbrand told us that they have a huge number of bets and all bets are full. For example, in Serbia, and now what is in Turkey, you will see the numbers, but we have for the total population on 75, we have, let's say, 60 bets totally for 7.5 million people. And this is the proportion of young people treated in child and adolescent mental health services. As you can see, the Italy is leading and it's still 6.0% of children who has mental health problems are treated in the specific child and adolescent mental health services. And these are some very high ranking country like Denmark or even uh, you see the Netherlands and Poland and still the numbers are really, really frightening how much care the children are getting. And also when we are speaking about availability of the intervention in child and mental health services in your country, you can see that most of the countries are offering family psychoeducation, learning assistance, educational support or speech or language training, cognitive behavioral therapy, parental training guidance, and then we have other things. So this is something that is most valuable and most probably most needed among our uh, consumers. And this is also for the WHO, Therapeutic Intervention for Priority Mental Disorders of Children and Adolescents. And this is something that is, for me, should be discussed. So psychopharmacotherapy, it's uh, the something that is covered in almost all kind of problems in child adolescent functioning. And then we are lacking in the psychotherapy and we are lacking in specialized intervention. So somehow most of our work is concentrated on psychopharmacotherapy, then CBT and then family therapies. So somehow we maybe need to think how to improve other things. This is the, the paper that I just uh, tell you recently about, which was published in 2018 in ECAP journal, and it speaks about the interface between child adolescent and adult mental health services. Uh, again, result from the state research, so you can see estimated percent of child and mental health services users with adult mental health services care needs as they age. And you can see that the majority of countries are actually lacking in this kind of transition, which is very much uh, appreciated and needed uh, when we are speaking about adolescent psychiatry. So the development of child adolescent mental health services in absence of special national policy leads to fragmentation of the services, and that's the reason why we need the policy. Inefficient utilization of scarce resources, absolutely, that's true. Inability to provide effective advocacy for priority concerns. Like if we have a policy, if we have data to show why we need a policy, then we can go to politician and uh, make their decision to be on our side. If we have a lack of constituent participation in program development and inability to incorporate new knowledge in a systematic fashion, then we cannot improve the services provision for child adolescent mental health. Okay, uh, last part is I want to present what are the uh, services in child adolescent psychiatry and I'm cordially invited you to come to Serbia and to collaborate with us because I think we can learn from each other and we can improve our uh, collaboration. We are much more share in common than compare with uh, Sweden or Denmark. I mean. We are all going and we are all looking for the UK, USA, Sweden, but somehow we have our resources, we have our ideas, so we have to find a way how to collaborate. So uh, 50 to 25 percent of children, this is same, and, uh, and the epidemiology is quite same all around the world. Children are same everywhere. So um, population in Serbia, as I told you, is around 7.1 million, and children are, uh, let's say, I have better slide. Uh, the children is about 7 percent, or even 18 percent of the population are uh, children. Uh, 
Then when we are speaking about demography, uh, you can see that usually from each uh, year we have about 70%, like equal numbers of children of this 25%. And this is the good point because I want to show you that our country is divided in several regions. And when we are speaking about uh, services, we can have one in this part, one in this part, and one in this part, and that's all. So care is mostly provided in public sector in Serbia. We are now starting with more private sector, but it's not still well organized. Primary care is lacking in child adolescent specialties, so we don't have none of child psychiatrists is working in pediatrician setting, which is very bad for our organization system. And most of the child psychiatry are in the tertiary care centers, so the high ranking professional level. And there is no nationwide studies concerning this issue. So what is the structure of organization of child adolescent health services? We have primary health care and we have 34 developmental counseling services. So each town which have more than 8.5 thousand children needs to have uh, counseling service for uh, the children to eight years. And then we have a youth counseling service. So numbers are not looking so bad, but unfortunately only nine of these services is working and none of these services, even if they are existing, they are not working. Why? Because pediatricians, they do not have time to organize these kind of services within the primary health care. Then we have a secondary health care, which is hospital departments. Only one department in Serbia is within on the secondary health care, and it's settled in the main city in Belgrade. And then we have tertiary health care clinics. So in primary care, children and adolescents, they can receive this kind of uh, help. But uh, even if they are good in numbers, even if they are very well organized, they are not working properly. Uh, the goal is preserving and improving health of adolescents and through prevention and curative measures to do on health promotion, education support. But still, even if they have very well developed plans and everything, actually uh, they are not doing their job. And the reason why they are not doing their job is overburden of pediatric issues they have. So, uh, developmental counseling services, as I told you, only nine has some kind of extra education and child adolescent psychiatry issue, and only two specialists work in primary care, uh, care setting. So these are these services. We have inpatient care in providing secondary tertiary care centers in some cities. So this is a Belgrade, this is Novi Sad, Niš, and 40 number of beds per patients for uh, three to 18 years, we have 52 beds in a whole Serbia, and for adolescent 15 to 24, we have only 24. So one bed per almost 30,000 children in Serbia, one psychiatric bed. We have, uh, we have two daycare units for children and three daycare units for adolescent. So the capacity for the children is 33, only in larger city, again, Belgrade, uh, Novi, Sad, uh, Novi Sad, and Niš. And then the total capacity in daycare units for adolescent is 48, so we have three daycare units for adolescent in, uh, in Serbia. So this is the table, how we are organized. Unfortunately, you can see we have this blank, and this is only 111. So healthcare for children and adolescents is for free. Usually, most of the patients are referred by pediatrician, parents, center for social work, schools, courts, and police. And the waiting list in public sector cannot overrun 30 days, which is, again, tremendous burden. So we are looking in UK. In UK, you are waiting for eight months to, see, to be seen by child psychiatrists in Serbia, you have to have uh, in a 30 days uh, patients if, if they are referred from pediatrician, parents, and whatever. Somehow they have also, we call this uh, emergency referral, then you need to do in a 24 hours. And who cares if you have a job or you don't have, you need to take, account, to take care about this patient. So these are the tertiary centers, mostly, as you can see, in Belgrade, the capital, and then one in Niš and uh, in Novi Sad. 
And this is greetings from my colleagues from Niche. So he sent you greetings and <laughs> invite you to come. So this is the clinic at the mental health for children at the Niche. It looks like yours, by the way, isn't it? A little bit. Uh, and this is clinic from the other side. So you can see they have inpatient upstairs, in, uh, outpatient uh, downstairs, and they have room for boys, room for girls. And this is something that he sent to you. This is Awareness Day in 2000, Clinical Center of Niche. So we are following this kind of uh, globally procedure to uh, aware uh, people about uh, neurodevelopmental disorder, especially autism. So this is Novi Sad. Again, we have an institution, a hospital uh, with uh, 10 beds. So they are mostly outpatient and daycare units. And the clinic where I work, uh, we have uh, six uh, organizational units uh, for children. We have inpatient department, which is with 20 beds. We have day hospital for, uh, for children with a capacity of for 15 children. Then we have day hospital for adolescent in capacity of 30 adolescent. Outpatient department, which usually take into account per day about 50 patients. Uh, first referral, and then we have controls. And then we have the unit for the protection of children against abuse and neglect, and day hospital for substance abuse adolescent, which is community units, and these people are only working with adolescent above 18, so we don't have below 18. So uh, overall capacity is, uh, as I told you, 20. And we have 11 specialists, neuropsychiatrists, psychiatrists, and child adolescent psychiatrists, only three of us child psychiatrists are working with, uh, with all these patients and then others are psychiatrists and neuropsychiatrists. So this is Institute of Mental Health, please come and visit. This is the, in the city center and this is our daycare hospital for children which is in the, in the so behind this building is a small garden and this is building uh, in the garden for the small kids. And this is our outpatient unit, so patients are first coming here. This is the waiting room, and then you have different ambulances for kids. This is our library at the adolescent unit, so they have a library. They have very good con uh, conditions to learn, to study, to have therapy. And this is our one of the room for uh, meetings and for the team assessment of the, of the children. So uh, this is our um, uh, inpatient department, so they have some kind of occupational therapy. This is a crafts where our kids are made. So uh, we have this kind of open door community treatment mobile teams, and we use this French model sectorial uh, approach. Most of our uh, colleagues were educated in Salpetria and uh, Tavistock, so this is kind of, we try to be a community-based um, service. So, um, uh, for example, um, again, our room. So this is a typical room for the child psychiatrist, like a toys and a computer. That's all we have, which is okay. This is our fish. We have small aquarium, so people, kids are coming, so they can uh, watch them. They we found very relaxing actually to have aquarium in the waiting room because when you are taking kids to the aquarium, they are looking for uh, the fish and they calm down a little bit before they came for assessing. So for example, uh, the total of first uh, referral in 2006 was 2,200 and up to the 15 years it was uh, 1,200 1, and something. So the total control list is, as you can see, more than 11,000 uh, per, per year. And as I told you, only 11 of us are working. So uh, this is something that we are just planning to publish. So this is the first time I, I will present. It's what has been changed in 20 years in patient treatment for children and adolescents with mental health problems in our institution. So we have a database of uh, 3,900 patients uh, in period of 1996 to 2015. And patients are from zero to uh, 18. So in, in patients we have only uh, adolescent till 18 and the problem is we have we on the same place have adolescent and small kids they are separate in the different rooms but still they are on the same place and plus for the children who are um, less than eight years they are uh, uh, they are with their parents at the department so one parent and one child if the child is below eight 
uh, as you can see, what changed. We have an uh, uh, increased number of pervasive and specific developmental disorders, and we have increased number in behavioral and emotional uh, disorders, uh, usually occurring in childhood and adolescent. So we have this kind of change uh, in the time. As you can see here, there is a trend of increasing the number of this diagnosing within the year of admission. So you can see from 1996 uh, to 1910 or even uh, later, we have this kind of uh, trend in increasing the number of patients. When we are speaking about what we are dealing the most is intersectorial cooperation with mental health services. So we are closely collaborate with my clinic with the pediatrician, preschool institutions, schools, center for social work, uh, facilities for deprived of parental care or facilities for children with disabilities, NGOs, whatever. Why I'm saying this is just because that it's not only the treatment and care we are giving to our children. Many of us are doing much more uh, job than it's only uh, treatment. Uh, just briefly to introduce you, education of, CAP uh, of uh, child adolescent psychiatry residency program is lasting four years and only two months in adult psychiatry, which we don't find very well, and only two lecturers in child psychiatry holding lectures in the two larger cities in Serbia. Uh, it's only two of us who are actually giving the education, which is a lot of, it's a kind of burden for, uh, for us. And now we have 42 specialists working with the children, among them 21 in child adolescent psychiatrists and 21 are psychiatrists working within uh, child adolescent psychiatry departments. 21 of them are working in the tertiary health centers, you can see all of them, and 90 of them in secondary health care centers and only two in primary care. So this is the devastating number that only one specialist that works in child adolescent psychiatry stands for 47 and more thousand children and adolescents. <clears throat> At the end, what are the challenges? So services are mainly provided in the tertiary health care. Services are not uniform through the country. The prevention and improvement of mental health in children is marginalized. Pediatricians <coughs> generally do not provide support. There are no forensic examination services for children. Even if we have unit for child adolescent uh, protection and from abuse and neglect, there is no, no, uh, no forensic uh, examination. Primary clinics that provide support and assistance are not included in the protection system, and there is a large number of, and still facing stigma and discrimination. So we have a lack of facilities, lack of human resources, we have a lack of financial resources, and stigma. So this is most common, again, with all of us working in child psychiatry. So what we need, uh, we need a better organization with a special focus on prevention and improving primary care centers, formation and education of teams for mental health care in primary care, improved therapeutic potentials of primary care, because there are much more large number of pediatricians comparing with child psychiatry, and somehow we need to educate them more about this, and we need to improve existing clinical departments uh, and to even open some more. So um, also we are facing with them very much, like adult psychiatry are not happy with our child psychiatry program, and, but we need to preserve and to pr improve independency of child adolescent psychiatrists to encourage candidates to choose child adolescent psychiatry. I heard yesterday that you know how many more, many uh, young residents in child psychiatry, which is very good because we need child psychiatrists, but in Serbia uh, people are not motivated because uh, they are, cannot um, uh, go easily to academic career, so you don't have the best, you know, that best wants to go to the academic career, so we need to somehow help this. And fortunately, we will have a board meeting next in Belgrade, and we will organize meeting with the stakeholders, so, so we'll try to improve this. So we need to enable better education and academic advancement for child adolescent and specialties. So uh, this is our association for child adolescent psychiatry and allied professionals, 
and the goals of society is to raise the level of professional knowledge, to gather organization, and every three years we have a congress, and again, I'm cordially invited you, we will uh, disseminate our uh, uh, invitation letter, we will send to Gul and to other colleagues from uh, Turkey, so we'll be very happy to see you around and to exchange our knowledge. Something that we recently start is a regional cooperation, so we have a meeting of the presidency uh, of the Ken from uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia. And we learned something that in Bosnia is pretty much the same situation. They have only two departments in child adolescent psychiatry and six specialists in child adolescent psychiatry. Then in uh, Republic of Macedonia, they have one department for child adolescent psychiatry, four specialists that work in child psychiatry, one department in secondary care, and uh, the training is lasting for five years. Then in Slovenia, they had three departments in country, 38 beds, uh, 10 child adolescent psychiatry. They are very small countries, so uh, you remember when I show you uh, the, the previous slides, they have very good comparing with the number of, of, the, of the people they have. And um, in Croatia, they have a well-developed prevention program. They have patients come in secondary and tertiary centers, and the secondary care is most functional about 20 child adolescent psychiatrists we develop a team and they hospital and polyclinics so they are, have uh, uh, better organized so somehow we realize that if you have better financial that you have better structure political then you have better child psychiatric services and this is something that is common and this is the end so this is kind of how, how we regularly cooperate we have a music we have fun so please come to Serbia and we will love to have you around Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this excellent presentation. Uh, so we can have the questions from the audience. Soru soran var mı arkadaşlar? Only two of them. If you have some questions, we can maybe discuss. Um, me uh, I want to ask uh, if um, in your uh, country, when you discharge a patient mm -hmm. from the inpatient service, uh, how do you uh, per proceed the uh, psychiatric follow-up? Uh, we always say this, after you have, once you have your patient, you are married to the patient until mm -hmm. the end, until they grow up till mm -hmm. 18. Mm -hmm. So since you don't have any child psychiatry apart mm -hmm. from the city centers, they are coming to the referral, they are coming to the outpatient to us again. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I have such a large number of controls. And mm -hmm. uh, until they get 18, after 18, you, you can send them because mm -hmm. there is much better developed psychiatry than child psychiatry mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. So since they are 18, they can go and be seen by mm -hmm. psychiatrists. So that's mostly what happened. And for the not so severe cases, they can we refer them to the uh, school psychologist or uh, mm -hmm. psychologist or social working uh, mm -hmm. workers mm -hmm. uh, working within the Center for Social Work, mm -hmm. but all patients, especially those on medication, are mm -hmm. coming again to for visits uh, after uh, outpatient, uh, after inpatient for months or even years. I have patients for 10 years now. Over 10 years. Uh, and one more question. Um, do you uh, have opportunity to uh, make electroconvulsive therapy? To what kind of therapy? ECT, electroconvulsive no, therapy? No, it is not allowed to mm -hmm. kids below 18, although mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. only one center in Serbia uh, which they mm -hmm. can apply the ECT, mm -hmm. but it's only for adults. For mm -hmm. children below 18, we are not applying ECT. So uh, do you have opportunity to give clozapine to treatment resistant yes, cases? Yes, uh, we are giving a clozapine for those mm -hmm. patients which uh, we have a protocols. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, in, but it's not national protocols. We invented mm -hmm. protocols for our for institution where I'm working. Mm -hmm. So after three antipsychotic is not working, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like six weeks, six weeks, six weeks, mm -hmm. we are changing to the clozapine. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>